Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good afternoon. Boleh dengar kan? Waalaikumsalam. Boleh. Okay. Okay, so um, today uh, we will continue with chapter 2, Amplitude Modulation, Transmission and Reception, uh, part 2. Okay, so um, in part 1, last week lecture, uh, you have learned on the process of amplitude modulation uh, for a single modulating signal. Okay, so remember uh, the input to the modulator, you have two input. One is the uh, carrier signal and the other one is the modulator. Okay, so I hope you still remember this uh, modulator. So you have the modulator. Input to the modulator, you have two. One is the uh, modulating signal or the information signal and the other one is the carrier signal, VCT. Okay. And the output here, since this is uh, amplitude modulation, so the output here we name it as VAMT or the modulated signal. Okay, so uh, in last week lecture, actually you uh, you only learn uh, on the mo amplitude modulation process if you have only one modulating signal frequency, VMT. Okay, but what happens? But actually in real application. Uh, your VMT here actually consists of multiple frequencies and multiple amplitude. Okay, so what happens uh, if we have modulating signal with the diff, uh, multiple frequency and also multiple amplitude? So this one will be covered in this week lecture. Okay, so uh, so this is what I explained to you just now. Uh, Modulation by a complex information signal. Okay, so complex information signal. So in the previous section, meaning in section, uh, part one last week, you have learned on how to calculate for the voltage and power for the amplitude modulation wave for a single modulating signal. So in last week lecture, you only learn how to calculate for the voltage and power if you only have one FM. Okay, one modulating signal frequency. However, in practice or in real application, the modulating signal is often a complex waveform which, which is made up of many sine waves with different amplitudes and also different frequency. Okay, so what happens if you have, for example, you have a modulating signal with two different frequencies where you have FM1 and FM2. Okay, so in the previous lecture, the output, the modulated signal for a single modulating frequency, okay, you will have VMT equals to EC sine 2 pi FCT plus MEC over 2 cos 2 pi FC minus FM minus MEC over 2 cos 2 pi FC plus FM. Okay, so this is what you learned last week. Okay, single modulating frequency FM. Okay, but if for example you have two frequencies, two modulating frequencies, then your modulated signal uh, equation or expression will become something like this equation 24. So if you look at here, this is the carrier signal. So uh, you have EC sine to pi F FCT. So this is the first uh, set of side frequency. Okay, so this is, uh, since this is FC minus FM, so this is lower side frequencies. Okay, so this is uh, the first set of lower side, set lower side frequency. This is the uh, First, upper side frequencies. This is the second lower side frequencies, and this is the second upper side frequency. Okay, so if you uh, compare these two equations and you draw, try and draw the frequency spectrum 
for the single uh, modulating signal frequency, your modulating, sorry, your frequency spectrum will be something like this. Okay, so over here you have EC, this is FC, this is upper side frequency, FC plus FM, and you have the lower side frequency, FC minus FM, based on this equation. Okay, the amplitude here is MEC over 2, MEC over Okay, but for this uh, equation now, if you draw the frequency spectrum, you will have something like this. Okay, so this is the middle uh, frequency, which is the carrier frequency FC. And then you, since you have two modulated signal frequency, then you need to have two side, two set of side frequencies. Okay. So this is the first uh, set of side frequencies. This is the second set of side frequency. This is FC. This is FC plus FM1. This is FC plus FM2. And this is FC minus FM1. This is FC minus FM2. Okay. And this one will become M1 EC over 2. This is M2 EC over 2, M1 EC over 2, and M2 EC over 2. Okay, so this is the frequency spectrum for this equation. So if you have five, frequency, five different modulating frequencies, then you should have five sets of side frequency. Okay. So, and another thing, if you uh, deals with information that have multiple frequencies, then if you want to calculate for the power, you need to calculate for the modulation, total coefficient modulation or total modulation index, okay, MP. Okay, you need to calculate for the total modulation index MT. So the equation for MT, okay, so please write this down. Equation 25 is MT equals to M1 squared plus M2 squared plus M3 squared plus MN squared square root. Okay, so this is the equation to calculate for the total coefficient modulation or the total modulation index. Okay, then only you can calculate for the upper side band power, lower side band power and also the total power PT. Okay, so this uh, formula for the power is actually the same as the if you have one single modulating frequency but the uh, the difference is that the modulation index now you need to change it to the uh, modulation index total mp okay so the others is the same okay so why you have uh, you need to calculate for the modulation index total because if you have a uh, um, modulating signal with different amplitude, different frequency, you will definitely get different uh, modulation index because you know previously that M is equals to EM over EC. So now you have uh, multiple amplitude of EM. Okay, so of course you will have different modulation index. You will have M1, M2 and so on. So you need to calculate for the M total first before you can use this formula. Okay. So now let's try and do the example. Uh, the first example here. For an AM transmitter with an unmodulated carrier power PC equals to 100 watt that is modulated Sorry, is it very quick? Yeah. Okay. So for an AM transmitter with an unmodulated carrier power PC equals to 100 watt that is modulated simultaneously by three modulating signals, 
with coefficient modulation m1 equals to 0 0.2, m2 equals to 0 0.4, m3 equals to 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Okay, so over here, uh, already given the uh, modulation index. Okay, so you don't need to calculate for the modulation index. You can directly use this uh, M1, M2 and also M3. So let's try and calculate the first one, the total coefficient of modulation, which is the M total. Okay, M total is equals to M1, M1 squared plus M2 squared plus M3 squared. Okay, because you have three, then uh, you will stop it here. Square root. Okay, so 0 0.2 squared plus 0 0.4 squared plus 0 0.5 squared. So you should get this is equals to 0 0.6708. 0 0.6708. Okay, so this is the total modulation index. Okay, and then the second one, calculate for the upper and lower sideband power. Okay, so upper and lower sideband power should be the same. So the formula is PUSB is equals to PLSB is equals to M squared PC over 4. So since uh, over here you have multiple, uh, I'm sorry, different modulation index, then you need to calculate for the M total. So M total squared PC divided by 4. So 0 0.6708 squared multiply with the carry, car, carry power 100 watt divide with 4. So you will get 11.25. This is, this is power, so the unit, don't forget the unit, uh, which is watts. Okay. And next, uh, the total transmitted power, which is PT. So PT, um, if you remember the formula, it is carrier power plus the upper sideband power and also the lower sideband power or you can use uh, mt squared pc over 2 okay so if you put in the values okay you will get this equals to 122.5 watts okay oh so if you don't remember this formula you can also uh, uh, use the equation P total equals to PC plus PUSB plus PLSB. Okay, so PC is 100, PUSB is 11.25, PLSB is 11.25. You add, you should get the same value as if, if you use this equation. So the answer is 122.5 points. Okay, so any question for uh, for the first example for today? No, doctor. Okay. Okay, so if no question, then we directly continue with subchapter 2.8. But before that, uh, I just want to highlight that uh, for chapter 2, um, Basically, for part one, uh, if you uh, for the calculation part, uh, it is covered in part one and also part two, subchapter two point seven. So the rest after this, after this subchapter two point seven, the rest is uh, theoretical part. Okay, so please do expect for for example for your quiz uh, or your test, final exam. So the calculation part for the chapter two will comes from chapter uh, part one and also part two, sub chapter two point seven. Okay. Okay. So now uh, we'll go to the theoretical part of chapter two.
Okay. So now let's look at the AM transmitter. Okay, so if you still remember the communication block diagram, you have the sender. Sender goes to the modulator. After modulator, you have transmitter. After transmitter, you have the transmission channel. After transmission channel, you have the receiver. After receiver, you have the modulator. And lastly, you have the recipient. Okay. So uh, this part we will cover on the transmitter part, the part of the modulator. Okay, but so for the amplitude modulation transmitter, we have two types. The first one is the low level transmitter. The second one is the high level transmitter. Okay, so now let's look at the first one, the low level transmitter. So if you look at here, this is the block diagram for the low level transmitter. Okay, so this one is, uh, it is very important for you to know how this transmitter works and also the function of each block. Yeah, so if you look at here, this is the modulator part. Uh, this block diagram is actually the combination of the modulator part and also the transmitter part. Okay, so this is the modulator part. This is the trans mission part okay and then the antenna here will send the signal to the channel okay before it goes to the receiver okay so this is transmitter transmission transmitter okay this is the modulator Okay, so now let's look at this block diagram over here. So this, uh, remember, your modulator, you have two inputs. One is the modulating signal. This is modulating signal, VMT. And another signal is the carrier signal, VCT. Okay, carrier modulating signal. Okay, so remember uh, your modulating signal is the information that you want to transfer. Okay, so that is why you have the modulating signal source. Okay, the source, the information that you want to transfer. Okay, so this modulating signal source, the signal will be sent to the bandpass filter. Okay, so I think most of you already know what is the function of filter. Actually, the, uh, the filter functions to limit the band limit the frequency so it limits the frequency and try to reject other frequency outside the band okay and then the signal will then uh, pass to the preamplifier so preamplifier the function here okay when we talk about amplifier you should know that the function is to amplify or to raise the source signal Okay, so this one, the function is to raise or to amplify the source signal. Okay, and then it will be sent to the modulating signal driver. So the function of the modulating signal driver over here is to amplify information signal to drive the modulator. Okay, so this one uh, amplifies. information signal or modulating signal to drive the modulator. Okay, another input we have the carrier signal VC, VCT. So remember carrier signal is the signal that we generate. Okay, so in order to generate carrier signal, we need to have what we call as the RF carrier oscillator. RF is radio frequency, eh? RF. So the function of the RF carrier signal is to generate the carrier signal, generate VC, okay? And then it will, the signal will be sent to the buffer amplifier, okay, to amplify and then send to the carrier driver. So carrier driver, the function is similar to the modulating signal driver. 
which is to amplify the carrier signal to drive the modulator here. Okay. So the output of this modulator is now VAMT. Okay, the modulated signal. So this modulated signal will be sent to the band pass filter. So band pass filter will limit the frequency and then send to the linear intermediate power amplifier and the linear final power amplifier. Okay, so this is important for you to know what is the function of this. So this is to maintain symmetry in the AM envelope. Okay, so remember your AM envelope, you have something like this. So your AM envelope should be symmetry, positive and negative. Okay, so this is the function of the linear intermediate power amplifier and the linear final power amplifier. And then send to the pen pass filter again. And then the final one, we have the coupling network. So the function of the coupling network is to matches the output impedance to the antenna okay then the signal will be sent to the antenna antenna will be will send the signal through the channel and then it will receive by the receiver okay so this is basically the summary of the how the low level transmitter works okay so if you want to know in details the function of each block you can refer to this slide lah. so we have uh, stated the function of each block here okay so this one that i've just that i already write in the slide now this is the summary of the low level transmitter how it works Okay, so the other you can read by yourself. Okay. So in this low level transmitter, the application uh, is used in low power application. So directly you should know that high level transmitter, it will be used in high power application. So what is low power, low capacity systems? Uh, for example, we have the wireless intercoms, remote control pages, and also short range walkie talkie. Okay, so this kind of uh, this application uh, only uses low power and low capacity. So you can only you can just use the low level transmitter. Okay, so now let's look at high level transmitter. So what is the difference with the low level transmitter? So this is the block diagram for the high level transmitter. Basically, it is similar. It is similar as in low level transmitter. So this is the modulator. This is the transmitter part. Okay, look at here, the modulator here. Uh, you have the two input. This is modulating signal, VMT. This is the carrier signal, VCT. Okay. So basically it is similar to low level, but the ones uh, that make it different is that the high level transmitter has power amplifier. Okay, High level transmitter has the power amplifier. So if you look at here, uh, for the modulating signal and the carrier signal, it has uh, additional block here which is the modulating signal power amplifier and also the carrier power amplifier. Okay, so that is why this high level transmitter can be used for high power application. Okay, so the function of this high uh, power amplifier is to provide higher power modulating signal necessary to achieve 100% modulation M equals to 1. Okay. So the others here, this is the same as the low level transmitter. So the function of each block here, also you can refer to the uh, notes 
for the low level transmitter. So the main thing that you need to know, uh, the difference is that this one has the power amplifier and what is the function of the power amplifier. Okay. So that is for the transmitter. So now let's look at the receiver part. Okay, so, so if you remember your communication block diagram, you have sender, modulator, transmitter, channel, receiver, demodulator, and receiver. Okay, so when we talk about AM receiver, we will talk about, uh, we will include these two, the receiver part and the demodulator part. Okay, so over here stated that the AM demodulation is the reverse process of AM modulation. So modulation uh, is to convert information, uh, original signal into signal that is suitable for transmission channel. But the demodulation is the reverse process, meaning that it will convert the uh, signal that is suitable for the channel, convert back to the original signal. Okay, so this is uh, what I explained just now. A conventional double sideband AM receiver converts the amplitude modulated wave back to the original source by receiving, amplifying, and demodulating the wave. Okay, so this is the uh, block diagram for a typical AM receiver. So remember uh, the transmitter just now. Okay, so you have the antenna. The antenna will send the sen a signal through the channel, and then the channel will send the signal to the receiver. Okay, so this receiver antenna will receive the signal from the channel. Okay. Okay, so say for this one, you need to know the function of each block. Okay, so after the signal received by the receiver antenna, it will be sent to the RF section or the radio frequency section. So the function of the RF section is to detect the, the signal. Band limit the signal and also amplifies the signal. Okay, so after that, it will be sent to the bandpass filter. Bandpass filter will limit the frequency and then it will send to the mixer or converter section. So, what is the function of the mixer converter section? It is to convert radio frequency signal into intermediate frequency signal. So this signal received from the receiver antenna is in radio frequency signal. Okay. So up to this point, this signal is in radio frequency signal. Okay. But after the mixer converter section, the signal is now we call as the intermediate frequency signal, IF. Okay. So basically, the function of this mixer converter section is to convert radio frequency into intermediate frequency. Okay, so after it converts the RF into IF, send to the bandpass filter to filter the signal and then send to the IF section. So this IF section, the function is to amplify, is for amplification. and selectivity. Okay, so what is selectivity? I will explain in the 
next to slide. OK, and then after the IF section, we have the bandpass filter again and then send to the AM detector. So this AM detector over here is what acts as the demodulator. So you look at here, from this point until this point here, the signal is intermediate frequency signal. But after the AM detector, okay, the signal is now, the signal here is now already been converted to the original signal or the information signal. Okay. And then the information signal will be sent to the bandpass filter for filtration. And lastly, it goes to the audio section. So this audio section is to amplify. Okay. And then only the signal will be sent to the recipient. Okay, so that is the process of an AM receiver. I've already summarized in one slide. Okay, and also if you want to know the function of each block diagram in detail, you can refer to this slide. Okay, so next let's look at the receiver parameter. So remember just now I've talked about selectivity. Okay. So the function of the IF section in the AM receiver is for amplification and selectivity. So what is selectivity? So over here, uh, it is defined as a parameter used to measure the ability of the receiver to accept a given band of frequencies and reject all others. Okay. The measure of the me measure of the ability of the receiver to select certain frequency and to reject others frequency. Okay, so that is what means by selectivity. Measure of the ability of the receiver to select. Okay. Mm. And to measure the selectivity of the receiver, uh, you need to compare the bandwidth at two levels of attenuation. One is at negative 3 dB and one is at negative 60 dB. Okay, so you can measure the selectivity based on the shape factor in equation 31. Okay, so equation 31 is shape factor is equals to bandwidth at negative 60 dB divide by bandwidth at negative 3 dB. Okay, so basically it compares the bandwidth at negative 60 dB and the bandwidth at negative 3 dB. Okay, so look at here, in ideal cases, cases both the bandwidth at negative 60 dB and negative 3 dB will be the same. So if you have the same bandwidth, so what, the same value divide with the same value the output uh, the the output of the shape factor the value is equals to one but in real application in real practice in practical circuit you cannot get shape factor exactly equals to one okay you cannot get shape factor equals to one Okay, so if you look at here, uh, for example, for a radio receiver, uh, the shape factor is about 2, while for the satellite, microwave and two-way radio receiver, the shape factor is close to 1. Okay, so basically the best uh, shape factor is of course 1, but you cannot get shape factor exactly equals to 1. So if you compare between the AM broadcast band radio receiver with the satellite microwave and two-way radio receiver, so you can know that this one has a higher selectivity because the value is closer to one. Okay, so this one has higher selectivity. 
So if you have any question, you can just interrupt. Eh? So the next, uh, the second uh, parameter is the bandwidth improvement, BI. Okay, so if you still remember in chapter one, you have learned on thermal noise. Okay, the formula for thermal noise is N equals to KTB. K is Boltzmann constant, T is temperature in Kelvin and B is bandwidth. So this thermal noise is one form of noise occurs in communication system that is proportional to bandwidth. So when if the bandwidth is increased, then the thermal noise will increase based on this equation. OK, so it is directly proportional. So you can calculate for the, OK, so if you look at here, as signal propagates from the antenna through the RF section, mixer converter section and IF section, the bandwidth of the signal is actually being reduced. OK because you have the filter and so on. Okay, so in order to measure for the bandwidth improvement, you can use this formula. BI equals to bandwidth uh, radio frequency divided by bandwidth uh, intermediate frequency. Okay, so you remember uh, at the receiver part, when you want to convert back to the information signal so actually your you, from rf signal you need to convert first to intermediate frequency signal then only you can convert to the original signal or the information signal okay so of course if you look at here as the signal propagates the bandwidth is reduced so you should expect that the bandwidth of the signal uh, in the intermediate frequency is smaller compared to the radio frequency. So you can measure the ratio between the RF bandwidth with the intermediate bandwidth. Okay, so you can get the bandwidth improvement. Okay, so smaller bandwidth, why we wanted to reduce the bandwidth because we want to have lesser noise. Okay, smaller bandwidth meaning lesser noise based on this formula. Okay, so the corresponding reduction in noise due to the reduction in bandwidth is called as the noise figure improvement. Okay, so equation 33 over here is noise figure nf nf improvement is equals to 10 log bi 10 log bandwidth improvement then you will get the noise figure improvement in the unit decibel okay so just like what has been before if you reduce the bandwidth, the noise will be reduced. Okay. So look at example 5.1. Determine the improvement in noise figure for a receiver with an RF bandwidth equals to 200K and an IF bandwidth equals to 10 kilohertz. So you need to calculate for this noise figure improvement. But before that, you need to calculate for the bandwidth improvement. Okay, so a bandwidth improvement is BI equals to BRF divided by BIF. So BRF is 200K divided with 10K. So you should get this 20. 20, no unit, eh? because this is the ratio. And then you can calculate for the noise figure improvement. It is 10 log bandwidth improvement. So 10 log 20, you should get 13.01 uh, dB. Okay.
Okay, the third uh, parameter is sensitivity. So sensitivity, I, I'm sure that you all are familiar what, with sense, the term sensitivity. Okay, so the sensitivity over here is defined as the minimum RF signal level that can be detected. Okay, it is the RF signal level that can be detected. At input to the receiver and still produce a usable demodulated information signal. Okay, so the keyword says this one. Minimum RF signal level that can be detected. And to measure the sensitivity, you can measure it based on the signal to noise ratio SNR. Okay, so if you look at here, why we can uh, measure based on the signal to noise ratio? Because if you look at here, sensitivity of the receiver depends on the noise power present at the input to the receiver, receiver noise figure, sensitivity of the AM detector and bandwidth improvement factor of the receiver. So basically all of this has a relation with the noise. Okay, so that's why we conclude here the best way to improve the sensitivity is to reduce the noise level. Okay, so if you want to increase sensitivity, then you need to reduce the noise level. So you can measure the sensitivity based on the signal to noise ratio. Okay, so higher signal to noise ratio means that the noise in the at the receiver is small. Okay, so when the noise at the receiver is small, you will directly know that the sensitivity of the receiver is high. Okay, so this is a summary. When the signal to noise ratio is high, meaning that the noise level is low and the sensitivity is high. So the fourth parameter is the dynamic range. So dynamic range is the range lah, the minimum, the range between the minimum value to the maximum value. So over here stated that is a difference in decibel between the minimum input level necessary to recognize a signal at the input level that will overdrive the receiver and produce distortion. Okay. In general, it is the range between the minimum value to the maximum value that will produce distortion. Okay, so if you look at here, if for example the minimum receive level is a function, the minimum receive the minimum receive level is x, and the level that will produce overload distortion, meaning the maximum, is y. Okay, so meaning the dynamic range is the range between X and Y. Okay, and the stated over here, the dynamic range of 100 dB is already considered about the highest possible. And if you have a low dynamic range, you can actually cause severe intermodulation distortion. So basically we don't want a very low dynamic range. Okay, because it can cause distortion. Okay, but the highest uh, possible dynamic range is about 100 dB from the minimum to the maximum. Okay, and the fifth uh, parameter is the fidelity. Fidelity is the measure of the ability of a communication system to produce an exact replica of the original source information at the output of the receiver. So basically for a good system, your input must be exactly equal to the output. But in real application, we cannot get exactly the same. Okay. So this fidelity will measure 
the ability of the communication to produce exact replica of the original source information at the output. Okay, so uh, there are several forms of distortion that will cause, that will affect fidelity. So you have phase distortion, amplitude distortion, and frequency distortion. So this one I think you can read by yourself. What is phase distortion, amplitude distortion, and frequency distortion. Okay, so you can uh, read this. If you want to know in detail how this distortion is affecting the fidelity. Okay, this is amplitude distortion and frequency distortion. And the last para, sorry, no, second last parameter is the insertion loss. So insertion loss is the ratio of the power transferred to a load with a filter in a circuit to the power transferred to a load without a filter. Okay, so stated here, filters are generally constructed from lossy components such as resistor and capacitor that tends to re attenuate or reduce the magnitude of the signal. So to measure insertion loss, you can use this formula, tan log P out over P in. So if you look at the definition over here, it is the ratio of power transferred to a load with a filter. With a filter meaning is uh, this one, uh, P out. P out is with a filter. P in is without a filter. Okay, so if you still rem uh, remember the block diagram of the receiver, you have the uh, filters uh, uh, in in the receiver block diagrams. You have several filters. Okay, so of course at the output, at the input, sorry, at the input, there is no filters. Okay, that's why I put it here. P in is without filter. P out with is with the filter. So that is why the definition over here stated that it is the ratio of the power transferred to a load with the filter. This is with the filter and the circuit to the power transferred to a load without a filter. Okay, so the ratio of P out divided by P in. Okay, and the last uh, parameter is the noise temperature. This one, you, uh, you have learned this one in chapter one. Uh, noise temperature or thermal noise. The formula is NKTB. N is Boltzmann's constant, 1.38, 10 to the power of negative 23. T is temperature in Kelvin and the B is the bandwidth. Okay. So if you uh, want to calculate the noise temperature in the receiver, at the receiver, you can just directly use this formula. Okay, any question? Faham eh? Banyak teori ni. Faham, Doktor. Okay. So next. So next is types of receiver. So receiver, we have two types of receiver. The first one is coherent receiver. The second one is non-coherent receiver. So what is the difference? Uh, the coherent receiver, the frequency generated uh, used for demolition are synchronized to oscillator frequencies. Non-coherent receiver, the frequencies generated in the receiver are completely independent from the transmitter carrier frequency. So this is the difference between coherent receiver and non-coherent receiver. Okay, so the ones that I hi highlight here, this is the um, key points that you need to know. Uh, the difference between coherent receiver and non-coherent receiver. Okay, so uh, in this lecture, we will concentrate on the non-coherent receiver. Why? Because uh, usually we will use for amplitude modulation, we will use non-coherent receiver. 
Okay, and this non-coherent receiver, there are two types. The first one is tuned radio frequency receiver, TRF. The second one is super heterodyne receiver. Okay. So uh, it's already 2.54. Uh, uh, I, I would like to finish chapter 2, part 2 today. So do you need a break, five minute breaks before we continue with this sub chapter or I can just directly continue? Do you need a break? Atau saya boleh continue? Boleh saya teruskan? Any response? Okay. Continue ya? Okay. Okay, so the majority of you wants to continue, so I will directly continue. Eh? So uh, just now I've told you that the non-coherent receiver, we have two types, tuned radio frequency receiver and super heterodyne receiver. Okay, so now let's look at the first one, which is tuned radio frequency receiver, TRF. So this is the block diagram of the tuned radio frequency receiver. Okay, so it is important for you to know, uh, to be able to explain how this tuned radio frequency receiver works. Okay, so if you look at here, for the tuned uh, radio frequency receiver, you have three stages. Eh? Uh, the first stage is the RF stage. The second stage is the detector stage. The third stage is the audio stage. So you have three stages. Okay, so this is the receiver part. Uh, remember, you have the signal coming from the transmission channel. So the receiver antenna will receive the signal from the channel. Then it will send to the RF stage. So this RF stage consists of antenna coupling network and also several RF amplifiers. Okay, so we have three amplifiers over here. So the function of this RF stage is to filter and to amplify the signal. Okay, so the first one over here, the function is to filter and amplify the signal. Okay, so this one is to filter, the RF amplifiers is to amplify the signal. So, uh, the, uh, so the output of the RF amplifier will be sent to the detector stage. Okay, so in the detector stage, we have the audio detector. So the function of the audio, the detector stage is to convert uh, RF signal into information signal signal so after it converts to the information signal then it will be sent to the audio stage so the function of this audio stage because you have the audio amplifiers over here so basically the function is to amplify the signal so after it amplify the signal then only it will be sent to the speaker. Okay, so this is the uh, process of the tune radio frequency receiver. So this tune radio frequency receiver, the advantage is that it, it is simple and it has a relatively high sensitivity. 
Okay, so this is these are the advantages of tuned radio frequency receiver, but it still have several disadvantages. Okay, so you can refer to the next slide. Over here we have the uh, the three distinct disadvantages for TRF. So the first one over here, the disadvantages is that the bandwidth is inconsistent. Okay, the bandwidth is not consistent. It varies with the center frequency when tuned over a wide range of input frequency. So if you look at, uh, if you use this uh, formula, bandwidth equals to F divided by Q. F is the frequency, center frequency, Q is the Q factor. So basically, if the frequency here changes, then the bandwidth will change. That's why the statement here stated that the bandwidth is not consistent because, because it is varies with the frequency. So when the frequency change, the bandwidth will change. Okay, so remember, so when the bandwidth change, then the selectivity of the receiver also will change. Okay, so that is the main disadvantage of tune radio frequency receiver. So if you look at example 5.2, for an AM commercial broadcast band receiver, uh, ranges from 535K to 1605K with an input filter Q factor of 54, determine the bandwidth at the low and high end of the RF spectrum. So if you want to calculate for the low end, uh, low end of the RF spectrum, okay, use the formula. So B equals to F over Q, uh, the F here is 535K, Q is 54, you divide, you should get um, 9.9 kilohertz. Okay, for the high end, the bandwidth is uh, 1605 kilohertz divided with 54. So you should get 29.7. Twenty nine point seven kilo crits. Okay. So you can see that the bandwidth uh, is different for different frequency. Okay. The second disadvantage is that uh, it is unstable due to large number of RF amplifiers tuned to the same center frequency. So if you remember at the first stage of the TRF receiver, you have three RF amplifiers. So because you have large number of RF amplifiers, it, uh, it will cause the TRF, the receiver to become less stable, less stable compared to the uh, super heterodyne receiver. Okay, and the third one, the gains are not uniform over a wide frequency range. Okay, so that one is for uh, tune radio frequency receiver. So now let's look at the second one, which is the super heterodyne receiver. Okay, so for super heterodyne receiver, uh, the name heterodyne here, means that means to mix two frequencies together in a non-linear device or to translate one frequency to another using non-linear mixing. Okay, so that's why for super heterodyne receiver, you have this stage, mixer converter stage. Okay, to mix two frequencies together in a non-linear device using non-linear mixing. Okay. So for super heterodyne receiver, you have five stages. 
of five section. So this is the first one. This is RF section. The second one is mixer converter section. The third one is IF section. The fourth one is audio detector section. And the fifth one is the audio amplifier section. Okay, so TRF have three stages. Super heterodyne has five stages. Okay, same. This one, you have the signal from the transmission channel. Okay. So after the signal is received by the antenna, it will be sent to the first section, RF section. So in RF section, we have the pre-selector and also the RF amplifier. Okay, so the function of uh, pre-selector is to band pass filter. Okay, to select certain frequency and reject other frequencies. So it acts as a filter, pen pass filter to reject unwanted frequency. For RF amplifier, of course, the function is to amplify the signal. Okay, so the second uh, section, we have the mixer converter section. So if you look at here, Remember, we to convert, we need to convert RF to IF, then only we can convert it into information signal. Okay, so the function of this mixer converter section is basically to convert RF to IF. Okay, using a non-linear mixing. So if you look at here, uh, the input to the mixer, we have the first, the first one is uh, the radio frequency signal, RF. So this is RF signal, eh, the modulated signal, something like this. This is the AM envelope. And then we inject another frequency that we generate called the local oscillator frequency. Okay, so the local oscillator actually generate another signal, okay another signal mix in the mixer converter section so from the mixing process the output will become the intermediate frequency signal so that is why you look at here at this point here now the signal is already in the form of intermediate frequency signal okay so this is rf this is intermediate frequency signal if so after the mixer converter section convert RF to IF, then it will be sent to the bandpass filter. So function of bandpass filter, of course, to filter the signal. And then we have the amplifier to amplify the signal. So after the IF section, we have the audio detector section. Okay, so this audio detector section is the one that uh, acts as a demodulator where it converts IF signal into information signal okay so that is why you look at here the figure over here now the signal is already in the form of audio frequency or the original signal or information signal so after the signal already been converted to the information signal then uh, it will be sent to the audio amplifier to amplify the signal then only it will be sent to the speaker so this is the summary of the process of the super heterodyne receiver that you should know okay so for a more detailed explanation uh, of each uh, blocks diagram then you can refer in the slide okay but roughly this is the process Okay, so you can refer to this slide if you want to know further, I mean, know in details the function of each section. Okay, so now let's continue to the receiver operation. Okay, so, so the first receiver operation is the process of frequency conversion. 
Okay, so in this subsection, you will learn on how exactly, uh, in details, how exactly uh, the RF signal can be converted into IF signal. Okay. So if you look at here, frequency conversion in the mixer stage is identical to the frequency conversion in the modulator except that in the receiver, the frequencies are down converted rather than up converted. Okay, so in the mixer, RF signal are combined with local oscillator frequency. So remember your receiver block diagram just now, you have the mixer. Okay, in the super heterodyne receiver, this one, you have two input. The input here is RF signal, and then we have another signal uh, generated by the local oscillator. Okay, so over here we have FRF, radio fre F, uh, RF frequency. And the signal from the oscill local oscillator, you will have a uh, FLO, local oscillator frequency. And the output of the mixer, you will get the intermediate frequency. So you will have FIF. Okay. So if you look at here, when local oscillator frequency is tuned above RF, we call it as high side injection. But if the local oscillator frequency is tuned below RF, it is low side injection. So what it means here is that uh, for high side, for high side injection, the uh, equation is FLO equals to FRF plus FIF. For low side injection, it is FLO equals to FRF minus FIF. Okay, so from this equation, you can actually get the frequency for the intermediate frequency, FIF. Okay, so from this equation, for example, for the high side injection, FIF is Sorry, FIF is equals to FLO minus FRF. Okay, so later I will show you uh, how to calculate for FIF. Okay, and then uh, next slide. So if you look at here, this is the equation that I just showed you just now. Uh, for high side injection, it is FLO equals to FRF plus FIF. Low side injection, it is FLO equals to FRF minus FIF. Okay, so FLO is the local oscillator frequency. This is radio frequency, this is intermediate frequency. So now let's look at this example. So if you look at this figure. So the figure here shows the frequency conversion process. So the key point over here, it is... Uh, uh, frequency conversion process of a super heterodyne receiver using high side injection. Okay, so if you have uh, questions on frequency conversion, you must make sure whether it is a high side injection or low side injection because the equation for high side injection and low side injection is different. Okay, so that's why it's important for you to know whether it is high side or low side. So over here is stated that this is the high side injection. So when it is a high side injection, then you can use the formula FLO equals to FRF plus FIF. Okay. So if you look at here, this is the signal. Uh, from the transmission channel sent to the receiver. Okay, so the signal here is the range is from 535 kilohertz until 1605 kilohertz. Then this signal is sent to the pre-selector. Pre-selector, the function is similar to the filter. 
Okay, it selects the frequency that it wants and it rejects other frequencies. Okay, so over here, if you look at here, the pre-selector here, the frequency that it wants is from 535 kilohertz until 565 kilohertz. Okay, so basically from this signal, now it already been uh, uh, reduced to 535k to 565k. So you can actually draw the output of the pre-selector like this. Okay, so this is the output of the pre-selector. It ranges from 535 until 565. Okay. And it is tuned uh, to the center frequency of 550K. So this signal here, then will be sent to the mixer converter section. So remember the function of the mixer converter is to convert RF to IF. Okay, so over here, you have FIF and then another input here. We inject the local oscillator frequency FLO. So the output of the mixer we have F, sorry, this is RF here. Yeah? The output of the mixer we have FIF. Okay. So now we can actually calculate for the FIF using this formula. So FIF is equals to FLO minus FRF. Okay, so the local oscillator frequency here is given as 1005 kilohertz. So you can actually calculate the FIF, okay, using this formula. So this over here, uh, this is actually the FIF, okay. This is the local oscillator frequency minus the FRF. The FRS is this one, 535, 540, 545, 550, 555, 560, until 565. Okay, so you minus the local oscillator minus with the uh, RF frequency. So you get the uh, intermediate frequency. So this is the intermediate frequency. So you can draw, it, draw the intermediate frequency like this. So the uh, frequency actually varies from 450, sorry, 440 kilo until 470 kilo. Okay, so this is the FIF. This is FRF. Okay, so the, uh, and then the signal FIF, the intermediate frequency will be sent to the IF filter. So the IF filter will filter this signal so that uh, it selects uh, the, uh, the frequency from 450 until 460. So from this signal over here, uh, the IF will filter the signal and the output will become this one. Okay, the signal uh, at the output of the IF filter the frequency is only from 450 until 460k okay because the filters filter the signals between this uh, range of frequency so it rejects other frequency outside this range okay so i hope that you understand the process of the frequency conversion how we convert from RF to IF. Okay, so if you look at uh, next example, so we have example 5.3 here. So this one is similar to the uh, example that I've sh just shown you just now. So if you look at here, uh, given the RF input, you have the FC, FUSF and FLSF. So basically, if you draw this signal, you will have something like this. Lah. Okay, you have the lower side frequency, carrier signal, carrier frequency, and the upper side frequency. Okay, so this signal sent to the pre-selector. 
So the preselector will select certain frequency. But because the preselector over here doesn't gives you the frequency, the exact frequency that it wants, so you can just ignore. Okay, but if the uh, in the preselector box you have the frequency range, then you must make sure that you filter the range, the frequency outside the range stated in the preselector box. Okay, same as the previous example. So after that, it will be sent to the RF amplifier where the signal, the amplitude will be amplified and then sent to the mixer converter section. So over here, this is FRF and then you have the local oscillator FLO. So basically the output of the mixer converter is FIF. Lah. Okay. So since this example doesn't state whether it is a high side injection or low side injection, then we assume that it is high side injection. So FLO is equals to FRF plus FIF. Okay. So FIF is equals to FLO minus FRF. So this is high side injection because it is FLO minus FRF. Okay, so if you calculate for the FIF, you will get this frequency. So this is the intermediate frequency, 450, 455, 460. Okay, so the local oscillator frequency FLO is 1355. Put in this equation, you will get this. Okay, and then it will be sent to the bandpass filter. Same, the bandpass filter over here. Okay, sorry. So the bandpass filter over here already stated that the range is from 450 to 460. So since uh, the FIF is already in between this range, then the output of the bandpass filter is this. It varies from 450 until 460. Okay, so any question for the frequency conversion process? So this type of question usually uh, ask in your test or final. Yeah? Okay, so next let's look at the local oscillator tracking. So what is local oscillator tracking? Uh, stated here, it is the ability of the local oscillator to oscillate either above or below the selected radio frequency carrier by an amount equal to intermediate frequency throughout the entire radio frequency band. So this is uh, actually similar to uh, what I've explained before. So if you look at here, it stated that high side injection uh, it is FRF plus FIF. For low side injection, the FLO is equals to FRF minus FIF. Okay. So it is different. Next, let's look at image frequency. Okay. So what is image frequency? So it is any frequency other than selected radio frequency. Okay, selected radio frequency, you know that you have RF, you have IF, okay, and also you have the local oscillator frequency. Okay, so other than these three, we have uh, other frequencies that we call as the image frequency. Okay, so this image frequency is the disturbance, eh? We actually, we don't want this image frequency. We want to uh, remove this image frequency. Okay, so, uh, so if you look at here, the image frequency here, it is equivalent to a second radio frequency that will produce an IF that will interfere. Eh, with the IF from the desired radio frequency. So this image frequency is a disturbance. It will interfere with the intermediate frequency that we have. Okay, so if you look at here, uh, the, 
from this point to the image frequency, the gap here is equals to intermediate frequency, FIF. And the gap from the RF to the local oscillator is FIF. So basically from the RF to the image frequency, it is equals to 2IF. Okay, so FIF plus FIF. Okay, so if you look at here, so F image, this is the image. The frequency image is equals to local oscillator frequency plus intermediate frequency, FIF, based on this figure. So if you look at here, this FLO plus FIF, you will get the frequency of the image. Or it is equals to FRF plus 2IF, so you will get the frequency of the image frequency. So remember I told you just now that this image frequency is uh, some uh, a sort of a disturbance. Okay, we don't want this image frequency. But how can we uh, remove this image frequency? So stated over here, the higher the intermediate frequency, the farther away the image frequency is from the desired radio frequency. Therefore, for better image frequency rejection, a high IF is preferred. So meaning that for a better image rejection, okay, if you want to reject this image uh, frequency here, we must make sure that the IF is the value of the IF frequency is high. Okay, because if you look at here, the gap here, this is equals to 2 FIF. Okay, so if the IF is further away, so the image frequency will also be further away from the desired radio frequency. Okay, so in order to reject this image frequency, we must make sure that this IF has a high value. Okay, so this is what it means by this statement. The higher the IF, the farther away the image frequency is from the desired radio frequency. Okay, so for a good image rejection, we want to have a high IF. Okay, however, that's a disadvantage also, yeah. However, the higher the IF, it is more difficult to build a stable amplifier. So, meaning over here, there is a trade off. You want to have a better image frequency rejection, so you need to have high IF. But if you, if the IF is too high, then the amplifier will become unstable. So, you must make sure you must determine uh, the correct value of IF, okay, because there is a trade-off over here. So, so this is the image frequency rejection ratio, IFRR. It is a measure of the ability of the preselector to reject the image frequency just now. Okay, so the image frequency rejection ratio, you can calculate IFRR equals to 1 plus Q squared rho squared square root. Q is the Q factor. Rho is this. Image frequency divided with RF frequency minus RF frequency divided by image frequency. Okay, so let's try to calculate example 5.5. So calculate the image frequency rejection ratio given the Q factor equals to 100. Okay, you also been given the RF frequency 600 and image frequency 1510K. 
Okay, so IFRR equals to 1 plus Q squared rho squared square root. So you need to calculate for the rho first. Rho is equals to F image divided by FRF minus FRF divided by F image. Okay, F image is 1510. FRF is 600K minus 600K divide with 1510K. Okay, so if you calculate this, you will get uh, rho equals to 2.113. Okay, and then you put this value in this equation. 1 plus your Q is 100, 100 squared, 2.113 squared. Sorry square root. So you will get the value of the image frequency rejection ratio equals to 211.3. Okay. So next, let us, let's look at the double conversion with double conversion receiver. Okay, so why do we need double conversion receiver? So if you still remember just now, uh, in the subchapter that I explained on the image frequency, I, I already told you that for a good image rejection, you need to have high IF. Okay, for good image rejection, you need to have high IF. But if you're... IF is too high, then the uh, amplifiers will become unstable. So for the amplifier to become stable, you need to have a low IF. So you get here, there's a trade-off. Okay, you want it to be high, but it cannot be too high. Okay. Because if it is too high, then the amplifier will become unstable. So how to solve this issue? So uh, that is why we come up with the double conversion process. Okay, so the double conversion process is to use two intermediate frequency. Okay, one is high frequency, uh, one, one is high intermediate frequency, the other one is sec uh, low intermediate frequency. So if you look at here, this is uh, the block diagram for a double conversion process. Uh, you have two detector stage. Okay, usually you have one detector stage, but for double conversion process, you have two. The first, this is the, the first detector stage. This is the second detector stage. Okay, so the first detection state is to come up with the first intermediate frequency. Okay, so you want to come up with a high intermediate frequency for the first IF because we want a good image rejection. But then in the second detector stage, okay, we will come up with a second intermediate frequency where the second IF will be relatively low because we want to have good selectivity and we want the amplifier to be stable. Okay, so this is what it means by double conversion receiver process. Okay. So the last subchapter is the net receiver gain. So stated over here, the net receiver gain is simply the ratio of the demodulated signal level at the output of the receiver to the RF signal level at the input to the receiver. Okay. So, for example, you have this block diagram. This is the radio, typical radio receiver. So, the net receiver gain, if you, uh, to calculate for the net receiver gain in decibel, you can use this formula where you add the gains and you minus the losses. Okay, so to calculate the net receiver gain, you need to know which, uh, which, apa? Which uh, appliance? Which uh, appliances? Eh, appliances. 
which uh, apa, components, which component is a loss, uh, uh, having a losses, or and which components is having a gain. Okay, so if you look at here, uh, where gains, the gains happen in the RF amplifier, IF amplifier, and audio amplifier. Why? Because you get here, this is amplifier. So you know that the amplifier is to amplify. It is to increase. That is why it is gains. But for the losses, okay, we have the pre-selector, mixer, and the detector. Okay, so this uh, losses actually it uh, reduce the frequency. Okay, just like the filter. So if you you should know which one is gain, which one is losses. Okay, so if you look at here this block diagram, so you already know that the preselector is a losses component. This is gain component. Mixer converter is the loss component. IF amplifier is gain. Detector is loss and audio amplifier is gain components. Okay, so to calculate, you just add the gains minus the losses. Just like example 5.8. For an AM receiver with a negative 80 dBm input signal level and the following gains and losses determine the net receiver gain and the audio signal level. So if you look at here, given the gains is uh, RF amplifier equals to 33, IF amplifier equals to 46, audio amplifier equals to 25, and the losses, pre-selected loss equals to 3 dB, mixer loss equals to 6 dB, and detector loss equals to 8 dB. Okay, so calculate for the net receiver gain. GDB. Okay, so it is basically gains minus losses. Okay, so the gain is 33 plus 47 plus 25 minus the losses. So we have 3 plus 6 plus 8. Okay. So you calculate this, you should get the value in decibel. Okay, so that is basically the end of chapter 2 part 2. So any question? Okay, so any question for chapter 2, part 2? So basically, we have finished chapter 2. Eh? Okay, so your test will cover chapter 1 and chapter 2. Okay, so until this uh, chapter 2, part 2. That is for your midterm test. Okay, and uh, we will have uh, quiz 1. Eh? So quiz 1 will cover on chapter two okay so your quiz one uh, most probably will be some uh, anytime next week or the next two weeks okay so um for your tutorial one i've already shared the solution for tutorial one in the telegram group so i hope that you have done your tutorial one and compare with the uh answer scheme that i have already shared with you so but if for example you get the different different answer uh, from the answer scheme uh, please uh, do let me know because uh, maybe the answer scheme uh ada salah eh? so don't as a, don't directly assume that your answer is wrong okay you can ask me so uh and also, I've already uploaded the tutorial too. Okay, so please do your tutorial too. So, uh, for class on Thursday, uh, uh, I hope you can do your tutorial too. Okay, so we will do a synchronous class. Um, a synchronous means that uh, during that time, 
the period on Thursday from 2 to 4 p.m. for your section. Uh, I open for any question regarding your tutorial. Okay, so you can ask anything in the Telegram group if you have any question. Okay, so if you don't have any question, then it should be okay. Okay, and... Okay, so lagi, any soalan before we end? No question, okay. So, um... So your quiz, I will um, tell you the exact date in the Telegram group. Okay, and next week, uh, there's no class eh, because on Tuesday, holiday, and also on Thursday, it's also a public holiday in Melaka. Okay, so there will be no class, uh, but they will, I will prepare your quiz, quiz one. Okay, so please study chapter two. Okay, so if there is no question, uh, then uh, we can end our class for today and don't forget to uh, leave feedback in the ULEN for your attendance. Okay. So I will uh, look at the attendance in the Microsoft Teams and the ULEN. Okay, so thank you very much okay and before that ada sesiapa kenal ni tak ada sesiapa kenal Ibrahim Ahmed oh ada okay okay Ibrahim Ahmed ada okay okay so that's all Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Welcome.